from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. on Praise the Lord from the vacation capital of the world, exciting Central Florida, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Well, praise the Lord. It's great to be with you today. I'm Pastor Pat McGuffin, and it's so good that we can gather and we can honor the King of Kings. Today we have some great guests. We have a great singing time that we're going to be sharing with you. And this will be the time that we look forward to you connecting with God. See, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And sometimes we forget because we think we have the way, we think that we know what to do, but in truth, things are crashing. And today, there's some answers that we're going to be sharing with you. So today, we're going to have an amazing guest with us, Dr. Robert Slierdan. He's an amazing author, world traveler, and God has used him so richly. He'll be with us in just a little bit. Let's pray, everybody. Father, I thank you that we can gather together as a viewing audience. And Lord, we can hear from you. We can connect with you. God, you are the one who wants to reach out and touch us. You want to show us the way. You want to explain to us what is the truth and what is error. Father, we are desperate for you. And we look forward for you touching us and reaching out and showing us your purposes for our life. In Jesus' name. Now let's listen to this amazing song called, I Love You, Lord. It's wrong. 
Wow, what a phenomenal song that was. I mean, the way that God wants to touch our heart, it's all about reaching His throne. You know, today we have an amazing guest that I really have enjoyed getting to know re uh, recently, Dr. Robert Slierden. Doctor, it's been uh, great to uh, get to know you a little bit. It's good to get to and, know you too. And yeah. uh, hear about your story, how you reach around the world, both in the written world, word, the video and actually being at different countries. Yes, yes. So. I've been to 127 countries so far. When I was a, a little boy, I decided that I want to be a world citizen, just not an American citizen. Uh -huh. So I bought a world map, put it on my wall, and every time I'd get up to go to school, I'd hit it and say, I'm coming to you, open up. And so my little faith confession or prayer was, it worked for me, and I'm 50 now, so I've been to 127 countries, and I like the nations of the world. And I hope folks out there watching will start going to the nations and doing something too, that's, at least once in their life. That's right. I, I noticed that uh, one of your goals that you've uh, said is that the Great Commission is something you take very, very seriously. Well, there was a person I read about who said, uh, made a comment, it's not the Great Suggestion, it's right. the Great Commission. Right. And for some reason, I've always heard it as a command, not as an opportunity to go overseas for a little bit of preaching and beach life. I go to do the work of the ministry and make friends. So it is something that I've uh, lived as a commandment that Roberts is told by God to go to the world. Whether anybody else does or not, I'm going to do that. So there that's kind go. of the way I work it inside my thinking and my heart. There you go. Now, when you go to these various nations and you see these different people from different cultures, different backgrounds, even sometimes different faiths, and then they come yep. to know the Lord, um, you probably see a lot of variety out there. A lot of variety. I've met many gods, I'll say it that way. I've been in their temples. I've met their holy men and their women and been around many different gods. Some of it's just strange beliefs. Some of it's demonic. Some of it is just, I don't know what to call it, bizarre. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I go to a foreign country, I make it my home. So when I land, it's home to me. I'm not a visitor. I'm home. Mm. And so I like getting to know people. I like talking to people. Things intrigue me. And so I have no problem asking questions. Mm -hmm. So I walk up to anybody and just talk to anybody about anything. And if you ask, you can ask any question I learned. If you have the right tone and the right disposition, you can ask the most personal question to have anybody if you know how to ask questions. So I've hopefully perfected that ability as I've traveled and done my, my things. Right. Well, it's a, it's a great big world out there. Yeah. Now, when you go, what is some of the favorite countries that you've enjoyed well, serving the Lord in? Well, uh, my favorite city in the world is London, England, mm -hmm. because it's really a world city stuck in the middle of Great Britain. Because when you go to London, the whole world's there. Mm -hmm. They speak English, but they also speak all the other languages of the world. Mm -hmm. So I love London. Singapore is my favorite uh, nation in Asia. Uh, I got to le meet the founder, Lee Kuan Yew, before he died a few years ago. And uh, the story of Singapore is a phenomenal a nation story that it was a bunch of little islands of fisher villages and Lee Kuan Yew comes in and 40 to 50 years pulls it into a world power and really a Christian nation sits between two Muslim countries, the world's largest Muslim country, Indonesia and Malaysia on the other side and it pops up and it's one of the most powerful Christian nations in the world today. So going there and everything in that country works. It's like you're in a little America all the Asian touches, you know. Some countries you go to, you pray that the light works, when, the switch works when you turn it on because sometimes it doesn't work. When you go take a shower, you pray that hot water does come out of the spigot because sometimes it doesn't work. Singapore, it all works. So I love Singapore. And uh, the African people are some of the kindest people in the world. Uh, I've enjoyed being in, in Siberia and meeting uh, the Siberians and that part of Russia. Uh, they're very kind people. Mm -hmm. Frozen. I cannot believe they live in that cold <laughs> area. When I went there, it was like 40 below zero, and they act like it's normal, and the birds sing. I'm like, this is not natural. This is weird. But it, it, those are some fun things I've been to. I'll I mean, you can go all day long, but uh, Singapore and London are two of my favorites in the there, world. There you go. There you go. Now, you serve uh, a God that um, you say you want to see victory spring up in a Christian's life. You don't want to just teach them. You don't want to just um, inform them. You don't want to just teach theology. You want them to live a victorious life. Now, some of our uh, viewers are probably um, saying, well, that's not my life right now. How do you help them? Maybe well, a few first, keys. First off, survival is not God's plan. 
That's called a man or a woman that doesn't know what to do, that just kind of survives until mm -hmm. something somehow changes mm -hmm. or something somehow uh, somebody comes in and changes it for you. Well, survival is not in the Bible. Overcoming's in the mm -hmm. Bible. So Jesus, with his sacrifice and his empowerment through the Holy Spirit, made a way to take every survival situation and turn it into an overcoming situation. So you first have to know that that's God's plan. Mm. So no matter what you've been in or what you're going through, survival is not God's plan. He wants you to be 100% victorious in every part of your life. So if that's not your experience in some part, then let's get the word in there. Let's get God involved. Let's get some folks maybe that God can put in your path to help you get victory there. Now, I'm reaching for 100% victory in my life. There's some areas I'm still growing in, some areas that need some overhaul, but I'm not gonna sit there and just wait until I die or Jesus comes. I wanna keep reaching. Now, if the Lord comes in five minutes, at least I was reaching. I wanna have what I call leper sense from the Old Testament with the lepers are outside the city. And uh, they said, if we go back in the city, we die. If we go forward, the military may kill us. But uh, they might let us live too, so why sit here and die? So my thing is, if it's available, then let's go after it. So one being, what does the Word say about it? Uh, would be number two. Number three, then go after it. So whatever the Word says to do, go after it. If it's prayer or getting someone to pray for you, so we say do something to make something move. Mm -hmm. Those are simple things, and, and you don't listen to the devil or your tired body or your goofy relatives because they'll <laughs> talk you out of it all the time. You've got to get faith people around you or be in silence Silence is better than negativity or, well, that's just the way life is or that's just the way we are. I don't like that at all. Mm. And then what the way is for God is victory and overcoming. So I'm going to keep reaching for everything that's not right to get it right and get bigger and better with God's help. That's my attitude and that's what I try to tell that's people. That's good. So when, so when someone uh, would come to you and they open up to you and they say, you know, I have been trying and I've been trying, but I feel like I keep, I'm keep, uh, falling down. I'm not moving forward. I'm settling for things in my life rather than being that person reaching forward. Um, are there a few key scriptures that maybe jump in your mind that you want to uh, talk to them and say, you know, this will be one of your steps forward? Well, one being, like I said a moment ago, was like a John 10, 10, God came or sent Jesus that you might have life have it more abundantly. You've got to settle. That's a principle to go after. So remember, God's plan is victory for you. So that John 10 would be one. And then the other one I would use all the time is you've got to do something with God. You know, you've got to use your faith, activate your faith. Mark 11, 23 and 24. You've got to say to the mountain, you've got to do something to move that mountain with God. So find out what you need to do. And then I'd ask this question. Uh, sometimes people give up because they're internally weak. Mm. You know, they, they know it here, they've read the scriptures, but they don't spend enough time making their spirit person inside a Rambo. They have no muscles, they're Mickey Mouse instead of Rambo. And so any wind that blows by, they fall over, they give up, or they believe whatever crazy person talked to them next. Cut all those out, build a strong inner person, word, prayer, praying in tongues, those things. Make your inner man strong so that you can go the distance of what you've got to face. So there'll be a couple of things. Find you a decent church to go to. Mm. Don't go to the church of convenience, go to the church that feeds you and challenge you. Mm -hmm. You know, what's so, well, that church is close to my house. Well, so is the hospital, the graveyard, and all the other things, too. <laughs> a church that's alive is worth the effort and the drive to get there. So find a good church to go to, and don't stay home and just say, I'm going to do it by myself. Go be among the believers and be among the live anointing, and that helps a lot. I'm in a church. I love being in a church. I like live things. I love the Internet. I love the CDs and the DVDs, but I want someone to grab my head and pray for me, or I want to hear the, the, the vibe of their voice when they're speaking for the first time. You know, when I hear you speak, you're, you, you talk a lot with action. It's not just about knowing. It's mm. about belief that has an action that, yeah. that moves you forward. Faith without works is dead. You've got to do dead. something. Absolutely. Now, now you had mentioned find a church and, and what have you. I know your ministry is worldwide, mm. um, but I believe you've made your home in Sarasota and you're now considering moving your ministry to the Orlando area. Yes, we are in the process of moving our offices and our residence from Sarasota to Orlando, so I'm going to be an Orlando citizen. Mm. I've been coming to Orlando since I was in my 20s. I used to come here and preach for Benny and he used to have his church, Orlando Christian Center, traveled all over and the Lord told me way back then that one day I'd move here and eventually build a church here. So that season has begun. So we've lived about 10 years or so in Sarasota after I left California and uh, now it's time to, to move here. I had a little vision. I'll tell the story real fast. When I was a little boy, now when I get to heaven, I'll ask the Lord, just tell me what to do, what day and how to do it. This symbolism thing drives me nuts, but I had a symbolism vision. I saw two bouncing oranges and the Lord said, you'll live your life where the oranges are important. And the first half of your life, you'll live on the West Coast, 
where orange is important, and the last half on the East Coast. So I ended up in California, in Orange County, California. There built a go. great church, great place. And I thought Florida, the whole state's in orange. So I ended up in beautiful Sarasota. If you haven't been, you should go to Sarasota. So I thought I was happy. And then I realized one day that's not the exact spot the Lord wanted me because geographical location is important to destiny fulfillment. And I realized I was close, but I was about two hours away from Orange County, Orlando. There so go. we've got to move ourselves and time has come for us to begin the process. And then we will begin uh, our second church that we'll plant here. But the first one we built in California, the one will be here in Orlando. So it's coming. We're going to call it Embassy Orlando. So we're excited about coming to Orlando and being a part of the Christian community and, and uh, do our call here and have fun. Well, we're glad that you're coming to Orlando. Let's, yes. let's change the, the subject a little bit. Um, God has given you the opportunity not just to travel and speak, but also to write and record different video productions. Mm. And uh, in fact, you have sold 15 million copies of books, yes. many, many books. Yep. And um, God has allowed that to be, uh, I guess, morphed into 60 different languages, not just yep. English. Yep. Um, one of the greatest series that you're known for is God's General. Yes. Would you talk to us a little bit about Well, that? this is the first one I wrote in the series called God's General. There'll be 12 volumes in this series. In fact, the first book most people know is the, the blue book. Why they say and why some failed is 20 years old this year. So it's the anniversary wow. of this book. And it's still selling like I wrote it yesterday. So you, you being a publisher understand how important those things are That's for a right. book. So I'm like, praise the Lord. Well, what I've done is I chronicle the lives of different men and women that God has chosen throughout time. Mm -hmm. I tell you their historical life story, what happened good, what happened bad, what happened challenging, not from a viewpoint of being critical or judgmental, but here's what happened, here's mm -hmm. how they overcame, or here's what, how they dealt with situations, good and bad. And so this one here dealt with people like Sister Amy McPherson, Catherine Kuhlman, William Branham, Jack Coe, Dowie Edder, Evan Roberts, all these people, uh, what they did, how God used them, the challenges they faced, and how they overcame. Like with Sister McPherson, she was married three times back in the 20s and 30s when divorced people might not make it to heaven was the belief system of the day. Mm -hmm. And for a lady whose first husband died on the mission field, then she married a second time to, to Harold McPherson, was a nice Christian businessman, but did not like traveling. And I thought to myself, didn't you know who you were marrying with Sister McPherson? She's already been to China. She's already, she's never going to be at Leave It to Beaver Wife. It's going to be a different story. And so that marriage uh, politely ended. He just yeah. could not handle it. So Amy went on and did her great life. And then toward the end of her life, she was very lonely. She married a third time and it didn't work. So I tell you all about what she did and the challenges and how God worked through those things. And so that's why I think these books have done so well is because people can identify with people just like you and I mm -hmm. who believe God stepped out of the boat, walked on the water, faced some storms, but the common thing is they didn't give up. Everybody great has done something stupid. So there's hope <laughs> for all of us. So don't give up or don't give up on your children. They can get through it. And God is a God of a second chance and a third chance. So just don't use all the chances up and know that they're available. I'll there say it that go. way. So that's these books here. And uh, we are very excited about how God's blessed the books around. the. Now, this book here is used as a textbook. When I wrote this in my early 20s, I thought, oh, a few people would like, you know, the history. But it became a textbook of revival, uh, history and the revivalist. And so I'm very humbled that God chose me to write that book for him. Oh, that's great. Now, let me ask you, where, where can somebody find your different resources? What, what is your website? Where can people It's just find my name, robertslairdon.com. You can get all my books through Amazon as well or call our office or go to our website. And uh, they're in different languages. We just did another contract yesterday for another book in Chinese mm -hmm. that goes into So it's all over the world. So they, You're not going to proofread that one, are No, you? I, I, I don't <laughs> even understand that. It's look at it and go, oh, that's so nice and praise the Lord and let it go. But... You know, it's fun to, these are like little babies. You have all the different languages and things, but they can just call our office or uh, use our website. Mainly you can do that and get all of our books. I have 77 books. 77 we books. We got the generals and kids books now and the DVDs where we have all the film footage and the pictures of Amy and Catherine and Wigglesworth where I tell the story and all that stuff flies up so they can so see it. So for children, um, what, what was the impetus on trying to make a children's Well, I got series? tired of our kids, especially our Christian kids, uh, always having heroes of sports players, music stars, Hollywood stars, or SpongeBob and SquarePants or Purple Barney. And I'm like, all those things are nice, but mm -hmm. let's have a Christian hero. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the books, uh, 12 volumes. Uh, for kids uh, age of 8 to 13 in that language uh, preference so they could uh, 
have maybe have a Christian hero in there. And I was probably one of the first ones to write the biography of Pentecostal spirit-filled uh, leaders in children book form. Because mm -hmm. we have Martin Luther, and that's great. We've got John Wesley, and that's wonderful. Corey Ten Boone, some of these great people. But we don't have anybody that heals the sick, cast out a devil, or raises the, those kind of folks. We didn't have that for children. We had that mm -hmm. for adults. So I thought, I think I'm that guy that should do that. Mm -hmm. So Bridge Logos did that for us. And so we've got Catherine Kuhlman's story, and Wigglesworth, and Branham, and Seymour Alden kids form, and we'll keep doing them because they seem to be working. So that's why I did it. Wow. So starting at a very young age, you're trying to impact them yep. with something other than that they hear in society. Yep. Um, give them a different hero to go after. Um, so what I'm hearing you saying is you're into leadership development. Yep. Tell us a little bit well, about that. Leaders set the course for every generation, every church, every business, and the parents or the leadership of the home. So if we don't impact their ability to lead and to give heroes that keep them stretching and going, then we, we just kind of fade back. Like one of my personal heroes that stretches me is William and Catherine Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army. Now I'm a Pentecostal charismatic, love my roots, but William Booth was outstanding when he birthed the Salvation Army and what he's done, and that's still going today. I mean, he created the change in society along with revival history. He created a whole revival movement. I mean, why we had the 10 o'clock uh, break in our work and our three o'clock break comes from William Booth in Great Britain who said, you cannot work people all day without giving them a tea break. So that's mm. why we have the breaks today, even in American culture. The child labor laws came about by General Booth saying, you are abusing kids, this should not be. And so his uh, advocacy changed and created the child labor laws that we follow today. So here is a man that went after mm. salvation, reformed society and did those things. And I wish we charismatics would get involved more with social justice and things in society along with gospel preaching and miracle working, it all goes together. Mm -hmm. It's not one over the other. So uh, if we can do those kind of things and get heroes and, and uh, let them know that these men did great things and had good families. That's right. You know? Well, without getting into politics, but talking about society in general and maybe even North America, um, we've been going through some very stressful times as a nation and people are looking for answers. Um, what are some of the key books that you would like to point people to that perhaps you've written that, that uh, jump to the forefront of your mind saying this would give you an anchor? This would be a real good one for you to see where we need to move toward. Well, some of my general's books that would talk about different time periods and show what they went through back then. There was like General Booth and those, even John Wesley in his lifetime, there was a great societal decline. The, the alcoholism was high and he came through with a revival and helped change. Those would be some, uh, some books to read, uh, to study. The one it's not that I wrote, but I always like to promote is Kenneth Hagin's book, How to Be Led by the Spirit. Mm. We live in a time today that society and even our safety may be determined by us knowing the voice of God and how to be led by His Spirit. Mm -hmm. Like when we go overseas to travel, not every place we go is safe, but God knows what's going on. And I would encourage people to get Kenneth Hagin's book called How to Be Led by the Spirit is one of my favorites. I read it every year because it helps you in business, buying things, hiring, letting people go. That inner witness, that inner voice is how God leads us mainly today. And so that would be a book that I would say, please get it and read mm -hmm. it. So when, when someone is walking by the Spirit, um, how do they tune their heart to hear the Lord? Well, the more words you put in you, the more tuning you are to hear His voice. The more word level that you have in you, the more accurately and quickly you can hear His voice. If you spend a little more time in prayer, that also tunes uh, yourself to the frequency of heaven. So, now suppose I'm saying, I'm too busy. Well, I used to give my church members ideas. You're in traffic. Well, turn off the radio for 10 minutes and just sit in traffic and pray in tongues. I noticed today, in Orlando, there's traffic here like we got in California. Yes. So instead of being mad and beeping your horn and upset, which I have a stress with myself, so I have to confess I'm working on that, is to use it to remember scripture or play a cassette or to even turn off your praise and worship CDs and sing yourself mm. and worship God yourself because listening is one thing, doing is another. Mm -hmm. When you do something, it fine tunes you better. And say, well, that's even too much for me. Well, then do this during the one song, it's a two or three minute song, Pray in tongues or pray in English or pray in Spanish for the length of that song. Turn it down and just take that moment and start developing your inner strength to go the distance like that. That's, That's good. what I tell you to That's do. That's good. So, so these are some tools that you use just in your life. Yep. You don't just teach other people, you actually do it. I'm at a stop, but I pray in tongues. 
Is that right? That's, your, that's your clue. One thing huh? I do. Because okay. life is so busy. So I'm going to stop light. That's about, what, 30 seconds where I pray in tongues over something. Or sometimes I even do this. I just tell the devil, you can't have me knowing Jesus, even though there's no battles. Just let the devil know once a day you're not his property. That's good. So little things. like So you can do it at stop lights or radio. So I do things. I think, all right, I'm going to stop light. Let's pray about this. Or I'm at, uh, here's a song that I like. So every time I hear that, someone will pray about this. So I do little things to be and make a part of the day. That's that good. makes it more fun for people than doing the 30 minute prayer thing in their house. If you can do it, it's great. But I think creativity in people's lives helps their spirituality today. That's good. Well, we have a little less than two minutes on this segment here and we've so enjoyed uh, having you with us Good today. to be with you. Um, would you mind praying for our viewers and um, uh, just helping them connect with God in the next few months? Yes. I want to pray with you and ask certain things for you to do. One is you need to pray to yourself. So as I pray for you in a moment, I want you to pray and ask God and open your heart. I pray for you today that where you are sitting, where you are standing, that God will reach from heaven and touch your soul. He will heal your emotions and bring peace and stability to your mind where you can think right thoughts and have right feelings. And I pray this for you, that the wrong people that are in your life, that God will somehow quickly get them out of your life and allow the right people to come in. God, I need and these people need the right people in their lives. So I ask for that miracle. I ask that for your children and your grandchildren that the right people come in. I pray for you today that God will do something great in your social life and in your thinking. Amen and amen. Amen. Pastor, Thank you so for much for me. being with us. Uh, it is a joy to praise the Lord together, is it not? It is a great joy to be with you. It's a great joy to hear your heart, to hear your heart, doctor. It's uh, good that you've put so much time into these resources too. And we're very, very grateful for that. It was that. an honor to do it. I love it. Opportunity. So thank you again. God bless you. And let's praise the Lord together. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.